everyone wants the ability to aim like this, right? Well, it all starts with a strong foundation, mouse control, and understanding. Also, to achieve solid frags, you don't need to aim like this. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Daz, and among us is Apex Legends Season 10. Now, with the new season being here, we are seeing lots of new players and friends returning to the franchise. Today's video is dedicated to all those new players joining back to Apex Legends, and a video to share for those that really want to get better aim on Apex Legends specifically. Let's dive in. First off, let's discuss some high-level settings to really improve your overall experience on Apex Legends. It is best to remove as much visual clutter or movement on your screen as possible. This will be some high-level ones, just not don't want to overwhelm you with every single detail, but let's get into some of the, the big ones that are most impactful. Under gameplay, turn the impact prompt style to compact. Once you understand the game, when you hover over items, their menu is much smaller, reducing visual clutter. Damage crosshair feedback, well you can turn this off if you don't like the crosshair showcasing when you shoot. When you're practicing at aim lab or aim trainers, you don't necessarily have this crosshair feedback. And this can be visual overwhelming for some. Now one to add back in, perhaps if you would like, is performance display. When getting used to the game, it can be helpful on your latency and frame rate to know what your performance is at. Now under video settings, set sprint view shake and switch this to minimum. This will reduce that shake that you're experiencing when you're running. The FOV ability scaling, when you stem as octane or use your ultimate as bloodhound, it changes your field of view. Turn this on or off depending on your preference. This can throw off your aim, especially for new players when your FOV changes mid-fight. Also speaking of field of view, adjust your FOV now since the default's at a lower one if you're a new player returning to Apex Legends. Most recommend 110 FOV to see around you initially and adjust based on your comfort level. Now ideally for graphics, the more you drop, the better. But if you prefer the crispiness of the graphics, the model detail, texture filtering, and texture budget, you may want to keep higher if you want improved graphics. Everything else can be dropped. The three mentioned above also have the highest impact on your frame rate. NVIDIA Reflex is also a plus for keeping latency low from your inputs. All right, now we got some of the high level settings out of the way. We're going to discuss strictly improving your mouse aim and control. Under your mouse and keyboard, you can change your sensitivity. Adjust this to what you feel comfortable with because this baseline comes in a bit higher. And of course, the higher sensitivity depends varying on your DPI. You can also adjust the sensitivity based on zoom under ADS mouse sensitivity. If you are just starting out recommending leaving this one alone, unless you want to speed up or drop your sensitivity based on your scope you utilize. Just note that your sensitivity slows down as the magnification is higher in Apex Legends. When moving around the test range, the biggest problem most newcomers have on Apex is their lack of ability to do a 180. This is a major problem when you're looting and moving around or even learning the basics, your ability to do a 180 in Apex Legends is very important. Just as an example, look at me looting in the test range and grabbing a gun off the shelf, then flicking to what is behind you. This is going to be a common scenario, and most of those new to Apex, their sensitivities are set to lower or they lack all or any control. What is a good scenario in AM Lab to utilize is Spider Shot 180 Ultimate. If you're new to Apex Legends, Aim Lab is an easy conversion settings you can use in Aim Lab to throw in Apex or vice versa. This scenario is very helpful in flicking back and forth and balancing that sensitivity that you're trying to find. Find that perfect 180 movement and refine on hitting those shots. Utilize your mouse pad just as you would in the test range and work on your movement. Now next up we'll discuss Star Track Standard. In the test range you're going to see these moving targets in the back that are helpful to getting you stable track and aim. These are great, but another way you can improve is using Star Track Standard, which provides more control from different angles. As you find that clean 180, you'll find it's too fast and you'll lose all control in a track. If you go too slow, you lose the 180. So go in game and Star Track Standard and find that balance. Now, speaking of balance, when you're new to Apex Legends, Micro Star Track Standard is a good scenario for you also. The reason? When you're in the test range, you should be practicing the recoil control of various guns. I highly recommend you need to set yourself further back. This is a major mistake most that are new to Apex will practice the recoil at a very close range. Nothing is better than practicing in-game, but Micro Star Track Standard is very helpful in building small muscle control. If spamming the recoil is not helping, and you feel like you're banging your head against the wall, use this scenario to practice bouncing your mouse around a small area. Now the opposite spectrum of small is sphere track standard. Most targets are going to be flying everywhere. In later videos, we're going to cover more intermediate and advanced arc tracking. 
that you'll have to improve specifically. But if you're brand new, Sphere Track Standard should be your go-to and it will be your go-to just to build up the muscle control and utilizing your full mouse pad. If someone is flying in the air and you're tracking them out of the sky, you need to be able to control the various movements and angles that you're gonna be aiming at. Work on trying not to lift your mouse and utilizing the furthest parts of your mouse pad. Get comfortable with these weird angles because remember you may be looting and then you have to flick to a spot and then you have to continuously track in different ranges of motion. Now, with everyone new to Apex Legends, I cannot stress enough positioning. You need to always have the high ground. This is where we'll utilize below track standard. This can be a really awkward angle to aim at if you're new to first person shooters. Now, why is high ground important? If someone is on the low ground, it makes it much easier to hit them with grenades, but also it's easier for you to hide and duck and weave from cover compared to the low ground. If you're fighting from a low ground position, you are immediately at a disadvantage. Keep the advantage though, by keeping your aim sharp from above. Use this scenario to help clean up the aim. One major mistake I see from newcomers on Apex Legends is they'll have height, but because they feel uncomfortable shooting from height, they'll drop on equal footing to try to land their shots. Now, a harder scenario is strafe track precision. This will segue to a future video on unfortunate circumstance, if you're new or not, that you will need to track a strafe in front of you and be precise. This is what you will run into on the daily in Apex Legends. Everyone is strafing in front of you, spamming left and right, left and right. But do not panic. If this is one you struggle with and you realize your sense is too high, go back to a prior scenario on the list and find the balance of your sensitivity. But in game, you'll see this is a common scenario that you're going to run into constant 1v1 encounters and fights. So what we have covered here is six intro scenarios for somebody new to Apex Legends. I want you to really dive deep into these scenarios and build a base and strong foundation for your aim. Go into the test range of Apex Legends, go into Aim Lab as well. And what you're going to achieve here is build a lot more confidence and success once you're in game and discover where your weaknesses are and what you can continue to improve on. If you enjoyed today's video or learned anything at all, leave a like if you want more in-depth guides for achieving more intermediate and advanced techniques. Also subscribe here on the official AimLab channel and check the description out for everything AimLab where you have a library full of resources at your fingertips. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys all in the next video.